Once again, a very well, warm welcome to all my dear students, listeners, and viewers of this radio tele tutoring program. I'm your tutor, Ms. Viwe Kunyovile from Mount Sinai High Secondary School. Okay, before we get into the topic that we are going to do today, let me just have a quick recap of what we have done. You have had already five classes with me. The we have done two pros, we have done grammar worksheet, we have also done writing section and poetry too. So today also I have come up with writing section again, but before that, just a reminder of what we did in the last writing class. We have done letter writing and I also have given you an assignment. I'm sure you have done it. Please go through the things that you have done and not only the questions that I've given you, but also try to work on the questions that are in your textbook or even extra questions that you can find around you. And as we have discussed that letter writing is important, I'm sure by now you already know the format. But one thing that I want to remind all of you again is that knowing the format alone is not going to help unless you write something. Some of you might just be thinking that by writing the date alone you're going to score, but that is not going to make a complete letter writing. So I want you to keep this in mind very clearly because the previous class we, have, we did not have enough time for all those discussions. So I had to stop in the earlier class. Now, first of all, we will dwell on advertisement. I'm sure you might have heard of what advertisement is. You, you watch the advertisements, you, hear, you listen to the advertisement, and you also read advertisement. Here, when I say advertisement, you can turn your books to page number 157 till 160. You will have related questions there. Advertisement will be found in page number 157 till page number 160. And when I say advertisements, there are two types of advertisement that is classified advertisement and commercial. I repeat, classified advertisement and commercial advertisement. Here we are going to do mostly with classified, but let me just give a difference between the two. Classified advertisement will deal with, the, say example, you see advertisement in the newspapers, like situation vacant. If there is any vacancy of post in your school, or you might even have seen advertisements given for teachers, to recruit teachers, and so on. So those uh, those are the advertisements that comes under the classified advertisements. We have to let, if you have built a house, if you have constructed a house and you want tenants to come and rent your house, you, also have, you can also give under to let for sale and purchase. If you have a mobile phone, phone right now and you want to resell it so that you can get a better one or maybe for some other reasons you want to sell it, so that can come under sale and purchase. We can also give advertisement for missing person. If someone from your neighborhood or from your family goes missing, that can also come under this. We also have tours and travels and many more which we have, but since we cannot be discussing about all, I just gave this few examples for all of us to understand. And commercial advertisements are the advertisements that you usually see in the TVs, or you usually see with a lot of pictures decorating it. You might have seen the banners around advertising, advertising their shops, or maybe any kind of product. Those things come under the commercial advertisement. I repeat, the advertisements that you see in the televisions, you hear in the radios, or you hear, see these are a little different, even the format of writing becomes dif different here. For classified, you just have to mention all the details that you want to mention, but for, for commercial, it's to commercialize it, it's for business purposes. And that is the reason why you have to make it more attractive than the classified advertisement. So far in our question in our textbook, we usually deal with the classified advertisements. And there are certain ways of writing an advertisement. You cannot just randomly put everything that you want to write in the advertisement. And here, one thing that we all have to keep in mind is you cannot use so many words. If you are going to advertise something in the newspaper, in the local dailies. Example for that matter, in our case, let's take the example of Nagaland Post. If you want to advertise something there, they will. you have to make the payments according to the number of words that you give. This is one thing that you have to keep in mind. And even in the question, forget about the daily life right now, coming back to our question, you will always be asked to write in about 50 to 60 words. There is, no, there is no point of writing a lot of words in the advertisement because your message has to be conveyed in a very short and clear way because people will be interested in that only if you make it clear and precise about it. Like 
we, like we have done in the report writing, even for advertisements, the classified advertisement, we have to know that it's important to use very short and catchy headings. Short and catchy headings should be kept in mind. And then the words should not be very lengthy. You can even use the heading. For example, for a classified advertisement, you can use the heading in phrases, not in long sentences because long sentences will occupy more space and that will cause problem for you as well as the readers. I'm sure you want, you want everybody to see the advertisement so that if it is relevant for them, they can come forward. There are times that something has been published in the newspaper or something has been advertised in the paper, but people don't, don't come forward. Maybe because the advertisement was not given very properly or maybe it was not that interesting for the readers, readers to get hold of that. That is one thing that we all should know about it. And here, advertisement is for the sole purpose of advertising something. You should make it very clear that your advertisement is very precise. And here, for, let's discuss the situation vacant first. If you are starting a new business and you want to employ people in that business, so you have to, you, can, you might even be able to go and call some people directly, but in that case, you may not get very compatible people to work under you. You might not get very good employees. So the best thing that you can do is to advertise, to advertise it in the newspaper or the magazines. So this is what we should keep in mind. You have to mention the qualification that you want. Qualification here does not mean only the educational qualification that one has. It can mean a lot of things. You might want a person who is well educated, but that cannot be the sole requirement for your business. If you want for a job, maybe the front desk office, you might want a person who is polite, cheerful, and a very pleasing personality. Those are some things that you want. If you bring a very well qualified person at your business establishment, but if that person does not know how to deal with customers, how will that be possible? You have to see the qualities of a person first. And so these are some things that we have to keep in mind. Write all the details that you want. Maybe you can even mention the salary because whether we admit it or not, people look for a job based on the salary also sometimes. Of course, the interest is there. But if you are very interested in a particular work which gives a very meager salary which will not be able to sustain a person, maybe that person will not come forward just for the interest interest and the payment also has to go well together. That is something that we all know. We just don't admit it sometimes. And so those are the things that you have to keep in mind very clear. Coming to the second one to let, if you have constructed a very good house and you want some tenants which can maintain proper discipline while they're still residing, if you advertise it, make sure that you advertise it in a way that people will get to know about how your building is or how your house would be. Maybe if it is according to apartments or if it is flat wise. Those are some things that you have to mention. And per flat, the amount of rent that you are going to be collecting or the number of rooms that you want. All these things have to be given in detail. The location of where your house is or where your new building is located. Also mention whether you have a road connecting to that because we know how difficult it is. If you have built a very good building without proper road connection to it, that might not be of very much help to all of us. That is something that you have to keep in mind. And while advertising, please make sure that all the necessary details as such are given. And then coming to the next, that is sale and purchase. I've mentioned in the first place about the sale and purchase. If you want to make some purchase or some sale, these days we are all well aware of the online purchases systems and you also might be getting involved into that. But here, sale and purchase, make sure that you mention the name of the brand. If you're selling a car, you have to mention the name of the car, you have to mention the chassis number or whatever has to be mentioned, maybe the color of the car. All those things have to be made very clearly to your readers. And also, if you, you can also purchase, you can advertise your your purchase. If you want to buy something and you don't just want to go for some brands that are just available in the market, you can advertise it in a very detailed manner. I want such and such thing. I want to buy a mobile phone which costs around and then mentioning your capacity so that the genuine sellers can come forward 
and get in contact with you. And then the next one is missing person. We all have seen of advertisements in the paper of people getting lost, maybe the children, kids, sometimes even elderly people get lost. They go missing so the family members does not have any other option, but they come forward to advertise it in the paper so that people or any, any citizen can come forward and help them. These are some things that we make use of the advertisement. And then the next one is tours and travels. If you are a travel agent, a tour operator, I'm sure you have seen tourists coming to our places. They, they go around the town to see how things are to visit our places. Even during the Hornbill festivals, we see a lot of tourists coming to visit us and also to explore our land and also to get more knowledge about the people of Nagaland. These are something. And they don't just come. There are some travel agents who advertise. There are some travel agents, some tour operators that advertise. And when you are a tour operator, see, we might not be having a very detailed idea of how tours and travels operate. But one thing that we should keep in mind is when you advertise, you have to mention the package. So maybe your tour package is for three days and then the amount that they have to pay, the, the type of hotels they will be given, the type of food that they will be given, and also the itinerary. You have to mention some detailed things of where you are going to take your guests around. Also, you have to mention that there are proper guides given for all those tourists or for your visitors. Those are some things that we have to mention in a very detailed manner. And one of the most important things that we have to keep in mind is that you have to mention your address and your contact properly so that people will get in touch with you. Even if you have written a very good advertisement, people are interested in it, but when there is no means of getting in touch with you, that is not going to help your readers or the persons who are interested in the advertisements that you have given. I'm teaching advertisement because, of course, even in the four marks category, we have a lot of writings like the email writing. We also have notice. Of course, we will be dealing with the notice writing also. We have the invitation. If time permits us, we will get into that at some other classes. But today, I want you to be very clear with this. And then one, one more time, I'm going to tell you that you have to give this advertisement within 50 to 60 words. You cannot write more than that. Sometimes you may think that 50, 60 words will occupy half of your page, but it will not. It will just be around proper sentences up to four or five sentences. If your sentences are a little lengthy, just in four or five sentences, you can finish. And there are times that you don't even have to use proper sentences here. You can give it in phrase ways because I've already told you, in the newspapers, they charge based on the number of words that you use. So I'm sure you don't want to pay a huge amount of money for a short advertisement. So make it very clear that you use very catchy phrases and words so that it will not consume much space in the newspapers or in the, in the magazines, but also you convey the message that you really wanted your readers to get hold of. It is not just for the sake of beautifying the newspapers or the magazines, but we have to keep in mind that this is for the readers so that they can come forward. They can come forward and grab hold of the advertisement that you want to make to your readers. This is something I'm just going to give you, since we don't have time to write all the things, I have brought a ready-made advertisement written for all of us. We will have a quick look at that, but that does not mean that you can follow just what I've told you. You can use some other words, but I've prepared the simplest advertisement here. Okay, it's in the, this advertisement is the answer to the first question of our exercise. You will find it there in your textbook. Everything that I'm teaching will be around page number 57 to 157 to 160. Please keep it in your mind. I've prepared the first sample. But I'm reminding you very clearly that you don't just have to follow exactly like I have given here. You can follow different, you can use different words. Uh, I want all of us to read the question here together. If you are there with your book, please turn to page number 159. Page number 159, I'll just read it out. Draft a suitable advertisement for receptionist on behalf of Hotel Radisson Blue Dimapur. I repeat, draft Draft a suitable advertisement for receptionist on behalf of Hotel Radisson Blue Dimapur. 
This is the question that we are given. Here I have just given receptionist and not plural, but in the question it's plural. You can also go with that. But here it means that I want only a single receptionist. That is why I've given wanted receptionist. And the first thing that you have to keep in your mind is always write situation vacant if you are advertising for a job. Clear with that? Write situation vacant if you are advertising for a job vacancy. So here, let's all read this together and I want you to also note it down if you're sitting there with your note copies because while we're still listening, we feel like we have learned it, but when we put it into practice again, that becomes difficult. So I want you to get ready with your notebook. If you're still not ready, get it there. Get your pencil, pen or whatever. Get, get that in, ready in your hand. And then first of all, you have to make the box. You have to make this box because making this box alone can score you half mark. You might not be aware of that. These are the simple things that we avoid sometimes or we forget to put it on. You may have written the advertisement very well without a box around your advertisement. And so that will minus half of your mark. If you are here to get three and a half marks, who knows, you might be getting only three marks. But one more thing that you have to remember is just by making the box alone will not score you half mark. If you don't write anything, you make the box and give in the exam. Your, your examiners will not be able to give you half mark just because of that. Keep that in mind. But this gives you an extra point to score half mark. And then the next is situation vacant. That means people will get to know. There will be so many people who are well educated. They do not have a proper job. They might be looking for a job like this. But if there is no opportunity, even if they would like to work and earn, that will become impossible. So remember that it has to be given. You can always write this in bold letter. Okay, and so if you have given that the person, the concerned person who is looking for a job might look at this because we all get attracted to headings which are emboldened. Those are the things that we are looking for. And there are times that in hurry, we don't even look at the things which are important for us because maybe the heading is or the headline is not big enough for us to see. When we are in hurry, I've told you about how we go about reading the newspaper. There are some certain areas of interest that arouses us. And so if there is a particular person looking for a job, I'm sure this will interest him. Situation vacant, that means he gets to know that there is a particular job that, is, that has vacancy. There is a particular office or a company is looking for someone to be employed. So this is very important. And then you have to write the name of the post. Here, you don't you don't always have to follow this format. I've just given you a very simple example. You can just write a receptionist required. You can go in sentence wise also. But for me, I find this more interesting. So if you mention the name of the post very clearly, then they will follow the rest. If there is someone who is never interested in the work of a receptionist, maybe that person will just leave. But if there is someone who wants to work in this kind of areas, that person will surely go into the details because these two alone can, can select the readers. For example, if you are not a football player, if someone says football players wanted, I'm sure many of the girls will not turn up for that kind of work. But for me, something which is never interesting might even be very interesting for the other group of readers. So we have to keep this in mind. And these two alone, writing these two and this box alone can score you one mark. So if you are listening with the aim of getting a mark, this is what we have to keep in our mind. And but here, what I'm also reminding you is don't just learn these things for the sake of write, earning your marks or for the sake of writing exams. Of course, those are very important. But these are some things that you're going to use your entire life. Who knows, you might become a very big businessman. You might become the owner of a very big palatial building. So in that case, you will also have to advertise. And if you do not know how to go about with this, sometimes it, sometimes it may be, it will also become embarrassing for you when you are well educated, when you have all the riches and wealth that you want, and you still do not know how to draft an advertisement would also be a big blow, an insult to you, to you and your status. So these are some things that you have to keep in your mind. Don't just learn for the sake of earning marks. I'm reminding once more, these are going to help you your entire life. I'm sure you are taking note of all these things. And then the qualification. 
Here I've repeated, qualification does not only mean the educational qualification that you have, it also refers to the qualities that you have. I've told you, don't just mention the qualification. If you want, if you want people who are well-educated, smart in that field, you have to mention some qualifications. Here I've written, graduate with good communication skills and pleasant personality. I've told you in the first place. So you have to mention that the qualities that you want from your employee. I'm sure you want the best every time. If you were an employer, you would want a very smart and a very good person who is adjustable with any situation in your field. So you have to mention these qualifications carefully. If you want to write age limit, here I've just written no age limit. Sometimes you can also, there are some particular works that only elderly people can do, or there are some particular jobs where only the youngsters can do. If those are the things you have to mention, because if you are advertising, for, like I said, for a football player, if you want to set up a team, and then you, and you give no age limit, I think that is not going to be very practical. I'm sure you would want to have some good players and smart young players in your team. If that is the case, you have to mention the age limit. So, but for this work, to be very general, I've just given no age limit. Preference will be given to candidates with good command of English, Hindi, and Nagamis. I repeat, preference will be given to candidates with good command of English, Hindi, and Nagamis. Here, I've even added Nagamis. I hope that's going to be fine for all of us because here in Nagaland, that has become a very important language for us. As we have discussed in some of our pros, it is the lingua franca for many of the uneducated people. For the educated ones, we know that English does not have English does not become any problem for them. But there will be some people who does not even have good, who will not be able to understand English or Hindi. In that case, you might also need Nagamis. That's why I'm just giving you this in the context of Nagaland. And these are some things that you have to mention because if you have got a receptionist who does not know the local language, I'm sure there will be so many practical problems for the educated ones or people coming from abroad, they will, be, they will be able to manage them with English and Hindi. But if there are some locals who are uneducated, they come, they come forward and they want to make use of the hotel. If they do not know the language, I'm sure you will not want, uh, they will not want to uh, occupy that. That is something that we have to keep in our mind. That's why I've given this salary. This is just an example, 15,000 per month with half yearly increment. That means every six months you are going to increase the salary. These are some basic details. This also adds a plus point. It adds one more point because if there is half yearly increment, maybe people will be interested. I'm, I'm just giving you this amount in a very generalized manner. I'm not saying that all receptionists will be getting this. They might be getting more, they might be getting even less. And so you have to keep in mind the type of work and also the salary that matches with it. That is why I've just given you an approximate amount here. And then at the final, see, since I cannot write everything in this small chart, I have not written everything, but you can give even more details than this. Apply with complete biodata by 20th of May. So you have to give the date, the, the date line where the candidate can come forward. Because I'm sure if you just give a very short span of time for people to come forward and face the interview or whatever, maybe some people will not, even if they are capable, even if they are compatible, they will not be able to make it on time. And that is going to make them as well as you in a difficult, to keep you in a difficult situation. Because I'm, as the owner, you will surely like to have the best, but if that person is, unable to get the message on time, it will be impossible for him also. So you have to give a, a time span that is, going to be, that is going to be appropriate for the readers to come forward. And this is one thing that you have to keep in mind. And also, here it says, apply with complete biodata by the 20th of May 2020 to the proprietor, Hotel Radisson Blue, Dimapur. So always make sure that you give this address very precisely because this is where they are going to work and also they will also be coming for interview in this place. And then finally your contact number. Here I've just given a random contact number, but you can give your contact number so that, and when you have given your contact number as the owner, also 
see, this is just for the sake of earning mark here, but in reality, in practical life, if you give your contact number and you don't keep, and you don't, just keep avoiding your phone calls, that is going to be difficult and that will not even help. And so make sure that you give a very uh, practical number. Sometimes we give some numbers which are not always reachable, that is not going to help anyone either you or the one who is trying to get in touch with you. So this is what we have learned about the advertisement and it comes under classified. There are so many types as I've mentioned, but we cannot be dealing with all the types of advertisement. And so that is the reason why I've, I've selected question number one. And I want all of you, I'm sure by now you all have finished. And if there's anyone still writing, I want you to make sure that you copy everything down because this sample is going to help you even in your future. Like I've told you, the moment you're sitting right in front of me, listening to me, I'm sure you feel like you have learned everything. So there's no problem with you writing an advertisement, drafting an advertisement, and you are sure that you're going to get four marks. But the moment you turn it off, who knows, the next day or the third day, you might tend to forget all these things again. That is the reason why I want you to take note of these things. And also, we have so many other questions that follow it. Make sure that you try to solve all these things. I'm going to give you the second question as your assignment. I'm repeating. Please write question number two as your assignment. This is, this is the sample that I've already given. And if you have copied it down, you can also look at the second question. That is your assignment. And please, please make sure that you do your assignments on time. By the time you get back to school, I'm sure your teacher will ask for these assignments that you have been getting through the DD tele or radio tutoring classes, make sure that you follow this, not just looking at it, but also putting things into practical. Are you clear with this? This is advertisement for situation vacant. Okay. Okay, the next topic that we are going to discuss today is notice. Drafting a notice, and that will be found in page number 87 to 89. I'm sure you have seen notices even in your school, where you are seated in the classroom and sometimes the staff will come with a notice register, they, have, they will read out the notice to you or your teachers will read out the notice that they had or your principal have served. All those informations that are given to you are considered to be notice. And here, like advertisement, notice is going to be used your entire life. You have to, you also have to know how to draft a notice. Who knows, some of you might become the colony chairman. You might become the head of department. Some of you will be the principal or the class teacher. In so many areas, if you are having, if you are the head of a particular organization, you have to learn how to draft a proper notice so that it will be conveyed. It will be used by the public. Your, the notice that you have drafted will be used public, publicly by the ones working under you or the ones who are your subordinates. And so I've just written a sample of notice drafting. In a notice, the first thing that you have to keep in mind is the name of the organization. This handwriting may be a little small for you, but I hope it helps. And here, the first thing that you have to keep in mind while drafting a notice is name of the office or the organization. Here, I've taken the name of Government High Secondary School Tuensang. Here, see someone in your first question. This is the question given in your textbook. I have selected question number one again, even here. So after reading the question, I will not be reading again because that will consume a lot of time. Please go through the question number one and then see government, high secondary school. No, mm, the name of the school has been changed. And then it might be even the colony. Example, all ministers heal panchayat or whatever, maybe school education director. You can write anything here, name of the office will be here. And the next thing that you have to write is notice in capital letter. So making this box, like I've said in advertisement, making this box and writing this heading and the date carefully will score you one mark altogether, half plus half. And so this is how it goes about. And as I've told you in letter writing, make sure that you write the month in full form and also the year. Do not use short form. The month and the year has to be written in, in the full form. And then if there, is any top, if there is any topic that you can give here, the heading. Sometimes in some questions, you will find it difficult to come out with a proper heading. In that case, we cannot help but just go without writing the heading. But here, inter-school debate. 
This is question number one. Name of the school is not mentioned. I've just given government high secondary school to Ensang as the, as the name of the school. You can use any random name if there is no particular name mentioned there. And then the, the body of the notice will go in this way. And when I show you this, it's not that you have to follow everything like this. You can also use other sentences according to what you find it convenient. But in the simplest way, for the benefit of everyone, I've, I've brought out with uh, this very simple one. This is for the information of all that an inter-debate, inter-school debate will be held at our school organized by the office of the DEO Tuensang for all the high schools of, okay, there is no apostrophe, just a mistake here, for all the high schools of Tuensang town. That means, I hope you know what is an inter-school. Inter-school means not only one school, but different schools will come and participate. Here, according to my notice, it, it refers to all the schools, all the high schools in Tuensang town. Not only one, but the DEO. This is just an example. The DEO has organized for all the schools of Tuensang, and then it will be on the 3rd of June. Here, why? Why the two dates differ? I've given a, a huge gap here. Why the two dates are different here is you have to keep in mind, the first date here is the date on which you are drafting your notice. I repeat, the first date that you see here is the date that you draft the notice, and the date here refers to the date of the debate that is going to take place. Date, 3rd June 2020, time, 10 a.m., place, auditorium, GHSS Twensang, eligibility, class 9 and 10. So I've taken class 9 and 10 here. Imagine that class 9 and 10 are the students, are, the category, are in the category where they will have to participate in the debate competition. And then finally, since there is not much space, I did not write so many things, you can also write even more than this. And in the conclusion, you can give these words. Any interested student can submit names on or before 20th of May 2020. Why 20th of May? Because here, 3rd June, 3rd June is the day which you, on which you are going to participate. So it has to be, things have to be prepared ahead of time. So you have to give, if it is 3rd June, you have to give, 20, you have to give some time, time space so that the participants can prepare well and come forward well prepared with this. For more details, contact the undersigned. Undersigned means the person who is signed below. Here, I've just picked a random name, Akamla H, Secretary, School Debating Society. That means Ms. Akamla H is the secretary of the School Debating Society. Here, school refers to Government High Secondary School, Tuensang. And then also make sure that you write your, your signature, you give your signature above your name. And always make sure that you give the designation in bracket. Designation, example, the designation for Akamla H is the secretary here, secretary of school debating society. So this is what we have learned about notice. It's easy, but sometimes when you, we don't focus in it, we, when we don't really get the format, it becomes difficult for us to. This is something that we have to keep in mind. So today we have learned advertisement and notice. I'm sure these two topics will help you. And every year you will get one question of four marks in this writing section, especially when it comes to the 60, 60 words limit writing. And so here, if you have learned this too very well, I'm sure it's not going to be difficult for you to score four marks in question number 11 of our NBSE HSLC, HSLC examination. As you are preparing for your exams too, I hope that this is going to help you. And I am requesting you one more time to please have a look at your textbook, not just listening here, but also to take down notes whenever your teachers tell you so, and this is going to help you. And with this, we are going to come to the conclusion of our class, reminding you once again that it is your duty now to, to follow up what the teachers are teaching you on this program. And until then, stay safe. Thank you.